Hey there guys, it's Metro and we are back. And this is a first leveling challenge of the pre-patch coming at you today. Now we actually did two leveling challenges on the beta to really test out the talents and stuff. And I have to say it was a resounding success. I absolutely love what talents do for the overall transformation of the leveling process. Unfortunately, the final leveling process is not actually in this phase of the pre-patch that I'm recording this at right now. So it's gonna get even better, but it's still pretty good. The goal today simply is actually just level this character Character. I've been wanting to have a warrior anyway, but we are going to be playing a warrior and this is going to be using the nomad style. We're going to be starting to add a little extra layer of difficulty challenge into these playthroughs though. I want to start really keeping track of my speed. I really do want to see just how fast we can do these nowadays because especially once the next wave of changes come, it seems like it's going to be pretty fast to go from one to even 60. And then we've been practicing speed running 60 to 70 as well. So, but this is going to be a nomad leveling challenge. The crux of it basically is just explore the game from the ground up. Three major things are going to occur here. One, we're never going to take any flight paths or use any hearthstones or any type of quick travel in general. Next one is we're not going to equip any gear other than things we find or make. So it's only going to be BOEs. I don't anticipate taking a profession, but just in case that is something that we can also do craft our own gear. So it's only going to be BOEs and on on top of that, we are only going to use leather or mail. We are not going to use plate or cloth at all. Unfortunately, the third aspect of the Nomad Leveling Challenge is not really going to be possible right now. Usually it's to use a massively reduced UI, and I typically rely on an add-on to do that, ironically. Right now, that is not possible. The add-on I'm relying on does not work. And unfortunately, some add-ons are really slow to be updated. Maybe by the time this is actually finished, it'll be good, and we'll have changed that throughout the playthrough. But as of this moment here, recording this first episode, I cannot use the massive script I have to hide all the different elements from the game. So we'll just have to go with what the base UI is. So, you know, this playthrough is going to take a look at the talents and the transformed gameplay of classes. And it's also going to take a look at the transformed UI as well. We're going to be playing this character as a fury warrior, only using two one-handed swords and try to get like really specific about what we're doing on this character, leather, male, and two one-handed swords. That's all we're going to have. We'll see how it unfolds. So we actually have the add-on set up to not actually start recording the overall time until I make my first move as well. It's the first time I've actually gotten to see that. I've been using this add-on on the beta to kind of record my progress, but this is the first time I've ever actually started a character and going to try to do the whole thing, you know, from zero days played. But I'm playing a warrior because I really want to have a warrior at max level, like I said, but it's also one of the leveling challenges I've always kind of held as like the last bastion of greatness for leveling challenges. There's almost a little nostalgia here. Like this was my first ever class I ever really played, so it's got a near and dearness to my heart there as well but it's also looked at as originally one of the hardest classes to level but i'm always thinking like a leveling challenge on a warrior is one that will be very very interesting the thing is they don't really have any actual self-healing so it's kind of important to think about that because if, if it's going to be even remotely challenging gear wise we are not actually going to have any any type of power that is going to be able to keep us alive throughout this process it's going to be simply down to us you know maybe having to eat or something like that even as well also just wanted to say i absolutely Absolutely adore this zone. This is probably one of my favorite starting zones ever. Uh, I just have such fond memories of this zone because I didn't really uh, play a lot of characters when I was actually, you know, growing up in this game. But I do remember the first time I ever made a night elf, night elf druid, and it just really stuck with me. This whole theme and kind of the woodsy feel to it, the big enchanted forest feel to it. It's part of the reason why I still like Arden Wield and zones like that still to this day because it feels very uh, different than something you'd see in the real world. And uh, the music, especially at night, and the ambiance about the zone, it, it is quite strong. Also got an opportunity for uh, seeing a rare here. And uh, I have an add-on that is actually going to return the Silver Dragon portrait to the rare, which I wouldn't say it was a controversial change, but it's actually uh, something that I don't really understand why they changed in the first place. So I wanted to get this add-on. It's kind of nice. I think it's called like Rare rare Dragon or something like that. So I just like the original uh, look of uh, the rares, uh, the, 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 the dragon as well. It feels like a little bit more authentic. Um, I see why they changed it. You know, like rares aren't really rare anymore. Even this with all these people here that was up there just waiting for us. So... I don't know it's not really rare anymore but it is still like kind of authentic you know it feels like when you see that mob with the dragon icon around it and it's a silver one you know that's kind of a special mob it's something more interesting than your standard mob and uh, that add-on is kind of nice to be able to return to that oh shocking how many people i've actually seen as well a lot of people are leveling it's actually yeah really impacting the playthroughs so far obviously the pre-patch has uh, not got every single feature in but it's still the talents really are transformative for the gameplay and i think you can kind of see that because you see a lot of people out here just leveling characters
features. It'd be very interesting. I wonder, you know, if, how, how many people enjoy that because for me, I think it's a really big feature. I, it's probably the thing that I'm most disappointed with with the pre-patch is that the leveling changes aren't actually present because it's definitely the thing that I would say is the most remarkable right now. Obviously, like Dragonflight is going to have tons of new stuff to do, uh, thousands of hours of gameplay ahead of us. But for now, the pre-patch is always nice to kind of test out the basics. Like in Shadowlands, we got to do the Chromie Time stuff. And now in uh, Dragonflight, I was looking forward to doing leveling challenges, which we will still do. But yeah, it's certainly a little bit less uh, interesting because I know that we now have to actually get to uh, 60 the hard way. We have to go through Shadowlands. I'm not exactly sure what the plan is at that point. You know, usually our leveling challenges in Shadowlands, they just stopped at 50. But and then, yeah, I'm thinking Dragonflight might actually end up being a fine expansion for it because there is a lot of flavor there. There's a lot of different ways you can quest, a lot of different ways you can get experience. Um, so I, I'm kind of maybe, you know, looking forward to doing a 1 to 70 uh, for, you know, the first time really ever. I just actually finished that quest and I also got the Mark of the Wild buff, which is another amazing re-edition in Dragonflight. I love class buffs. I always have. And the Druid buff is actually my favorite one. Don't ask me why. It's just something I've always kind of been gravitating towards. I like the theme of it. I like the fact that it's a little bit more versatile than the other ones as well. So we're now entering that infamous questing area here. This guy is actually in Classic as well, this mob here, and he is not a rare in Classic. But he's just like a named mob that doesn't have any special loot on him, so it looks like in Cataclysm they actually made him a rare, which I think is kind of funny. But yeah, we have the uh, nice silver portrait rare dragon add-on, and I, I just like it better. I think it's a lot more authentic, like I said, in it. It feels a lot more like we're actually fighting a mob that's somewhat special. We got our first actual BOE there as well from that rare. A cloak that has no actual stats on it, but we don't even have a cloak on, so... There we go. First BOE of the playthrough has been officially equipped. And again, we're only going to be using anything not plate or cloth. So usually we can use like white items as well, but I probably won't do that. I'll just stick with this gear in case you haven't been able to tell. I actually equipped it a bunch of leather gear for this character. It starts with like actual plate gear on, but I wanted to kind of remove that from even the start of the playthrough as well. So I just got a bunch of the Druid leather gear, which I think is the best looking set from the Night Elf section. But yes, now entering the famous Benethil Barrow Den. We have an NPC with this that's gonna dramatically improve our success rate down here, but it still can be pretty overwhelming. There's still gonna be times where we're gonna fight three or four mobs. It's a pretty cool quest. It's good theme, it's good lore, but yeah, man, this has gotta be one of the hardest quests ever in the game. And it's funny because there's another really couple of very difficult quests in Darkshore as well. I do feel like Night Elf actually get like the hardest one to 20 segment of any race that exists in the game in classic and it, it you know it kind of doesn't really go away either for a long time killing mobs down here and we actually got our second boe as well this is a pretty famous sword we get this a lot during uh even classic back in the day a lot of uh, green swords you'd see drop oh, this is going to play out perfectly because we do need a one-handed sword so we now have our second weapon we actually had one from a quest before but yeah this will be the one we use here pretty exciting first uh, two boes all within a few minutes of each other both within the same quest it's funny though even even if you do a non-nomad, like a regular leveling playthrough of any character and you get so many levels from the starting zone now that you really don't get any gear from at all. Like even that you saw that even that BOE didn't actually have any stats on it. So it's very, very likely that you'll end this zone and you'll end up in whatever zone you're in next and you'll pretty much be naked. You'll be wearing all white gear, gray gear, gear that doesn't even exist in many slots as well. So it's a good like way to kind of start off a leveling playthrough anyway. It feels a little bit more like almost like its own challenge but here we are we are level 10 and we now get our first talent point which i am finding i just love the way this whole system works so we're going to go ahead and choose the fury specialization we should be getting a, a stance if i remember correctly yep oh yeah we already get berserk stance which i guess we'll just be using for the whole playthrough anyway kind of boring when you only have the one but i like the way that they try to at least bring that back i think it'll be more interesting for actually prot warrior in terms of the first talent point pretty unceremonious i think we'll just take war machine the only one that really kind of helps us at all here but we have our two weapons now good thing that boe was a one hand because the actual sword we had prior was a main hand only so wouldn't have actually worked but we are now almost ready to be a fury warrior one last thing we're going to do in the episode is going to head go ahead and get our mount and we get to ride our favorite mount here as night elf this is honestly one of my favorite mounts in the whole game i just love the color scheme i'll never forget the first time i ever saw somebody riding this in classic as well it really made a big impact on me and still to this day i absolutely love using this mount whenever i can play a night elf so that is it next episode we will be back we are about an hour into this as well one hour for 10 levels not the best thing we've ever done but having fun along the way is all that matters so we will be there bright-eyed and bushy-tailed ready for the next probably many many hours of this leveling
Bodybuilding Challenge. We'll see you guys soon. If you are watching this, there is a playlist with every single episode already in it. I try never to publish playthroughs unless I've actually finished them, but in this case, we might not actually be done with it. It's just going to depend on how I treat the higher levels and what's actually happening with the pre-patch. So thank you for watching. We will see you guys in the next episode. Make sure you're checking the playlist. It should be down below. All the episodes will be there unlisted for you to watch at your pleasure. We'll see you guys there.